In their incredibly long 450 million year history, sharks have survived five mass extinctions, including the one that killed off all dinosaurs except the ancestors of modern birds. How did they do it? What's their secret? As old Darwin would say, it's all about evolution, kids. Almost everyone has at least a mild goliophobia, a fear of sharks, and given their sharp teeth, hunting prowess, and intimidating silhouettes, it's not surprising. But what would you do if you found yourself in a similar situation? This terrifying tiger shark, calmly but calculatedly, made its way toward divers diving off the coast of the Bahamas in February 20th. The predator was only a few centimeters away from them, and Nikki found herself in the unenviable position of becoming a possible snack for the shark. It seems that the shark was just curious. After great whites, tiger sharks, have the second highest number of attacks on humans. Since records began in the 16th century, they have attacked 138 times and killed 36 people. Undoubtedly, putting your hand on a shark's head could almost certainly leave you without a couple of fingers. But Nikki did the right thing. She touched the nose to make the fish swim away. There are hundreds of electrical receptors inside a shark's snout that pick up changes in the electric and magnetic fields in the ocean, which helps them navigate and spot prey. Since all animals have a weak electric field due to nerve and muscle activity, even a light touch to the nose disrupts the unique electronic sensor, causing an unpleasant sensation. So the shark will surely swim away. Nikki is a professional diver, but dealing with such predators is very risky and all it takes is one wrong move to make things far more tragic. We know that bony fish have a special swim bladder, a bag inside with air and gas, which prevents the fish from drowning and maintains this buoyancy. Sharks don't have that component. Now we know that first of all, in some sharks, they gain air in their intestines, in their stomachs, and the active system actually works by mixing the air. This allows them to stay smooth in thick waters. In many sharks, the liver is very large, and it's just that it's large not only to excrete excess salts, but also to maintain neutral buoyancy in thick waters. What's interesting is that one of the most important factors for a shark is that they need to keep some salt inside their body. This may sound a bit strange, but without salt, the shark's cells will simply burst one by one, causing abdominal bloating and death. It is this feature of their anatomy that we should be thankful that most sharks cannot enter fresh water. Once such water enters the predator's body through the gills, the internal salt levels will immediately drop. The volumes of the shark itself will, in a sense, increase. Even if we are talking about a great white shark, it will be simply impossible to avoid death after such a bloat. But this, of course, is not the only shark quirk. Recently, scientists have discovered a shark that can fluoresce, cookie cutter shark. It is the largest animal that can glow in the dark. And imagine the situation. You are in the sea, above you twinkling stars, romance and all that, and then bang. This stardom turns out to be nothing but a disco shark that glows in ultraviolet, like cosmic pollen in a stellar galaxy. Scientists are guessing whether it's a disguise or just a fashion trend in the shark world. And now this glowing shark isn't just hanging out at its own personal neon concert, it's using its lighting effects to hunt. What a cunning plan. It lives in warm waters, looks not so attractive, and feeds by tearing off chunks of its prey right as it goes. I'm not kidding, its mouth is surrounded by suction cups, thanks to which this shark, damn it's weird to call such a small creature a shark, it can barely grow to 50 centimeters around 20 inches. So thanks to the suction cups, the shark locks onto the victim's body and uses its teeth. The upper ones look quite normal, but the lower ones are interlocked and resemble a saw. This creepy fish literally cuts them a piece of meat, leaving behind a wound about seven centimeters deep and five centimeters in diameter, approximately three inches deep and two inches in diameter depending, of course, on the size of the shark and the victim. But the fact remains that after taking a bite, the Brazilian glow shark instantly swims away as if nothing had happened. The Brazilian luminescent shark's menu includes everything. That is literally dolphins, rays, tuna, smaller fish, squid, seals, if you happen to catch one, as well as other sharks and even killer whales. Well, let's break down this shark fashion statement called scales. These guys wear it like every piece of them is a small, tooth-shaped piece of body armor. 
And it's not some plastic beads, it's real dentin with enamel, just like in our teeth. Imagine your skin is a strong corset that protects you and at the same time makes you look like a fighting dragon from Viking tales. No matter how you spin it, it's a tough and, most importantly, effective ensemble for life in the big and unpredictable ocean. Sharks, ah, those sea vagabonds, spin through the ages like ninjas in the fog. You can't see them, but they're there. In fact, if you try to set up a detective in the stone archives of antiquity, most of the time sharks escape our gaze. Shark fossils that have survived for millions of years are mostly teeth and scales. Floating on the surface of the water, this girl found herself surrounded by at least 20 nurse sharks off the coast of the Maldives. Although it looks scary, there have only been nine unprovoked attacks on humans by these sharks. They are usually not aggressive, but their bites are still dangerous. Nurse sharks have teeth literally like a grater, and they suck food into their mouths, grinding it up in the process. If such a shark with an art like a vacuum cleaner grabs you, you'll be left with a complete wound where it turned your flesh into mincemeat. What's worse, when nurse sharks latch onto their prey, they often won't let go. Well, the Mediterranean Sea also boasts many strange sharks. For example, it was here that the pig-faced shark, Angula rough shark, was found. If this had happened in the Middle Ages, people would have thought it was demons in the water. The shark looks like any other shark, a swift hunter with steep dorsal fins, but if you look closely at its face, you will suddenly meet the eyes with an emoji depicting a pig. And it's not even a genetic mutation. It's just a species called the common centrina. However, in some harbors it is known as pigfish, and this name much better reflects the reality. Nature awarded the shark with a flat head, wide set eyes, and a pinkish snout, but apparently she thought it was not enough. It should have been nicknamed pigfish. So now when this shark is pulled out of the water, it makes a sound similar to grunting. And Greenland sharks are considered by scientists to be the longest living vertebrates in the world. A few years ago, they found one that was 392 years old. They live deep in the cold waters of the Arctic and Atlantic oceans and grow very slowly, about a centimeter a year. At the same time, the length of adult sharks can exceed five meters. Greenland sharks have adapted well to life in cold water. They move slowly to conserve energy, and their tissues contain large amounts of chemical compounds that prevent ice crystals from forming, much like antifreeze. Perhaps the adaptation to polar waters and the associated slow metabolism is what gives these sharks such longevity. But even 400 years is a small thing on a shark's scale. After all, they have existed on Earth, or rather in the water, for much longer, about 450 million years. Even if one species of shark went extinct because of some catastrophe, the survivors lived in different environments. We usually think of sharks as exclusively carnivorous, but the founding scientists have shown that they are not so picky and don't mind diversifying their menu with seagrasses. This omnivorous nest may help sharks survive starvation eras when their usual prey have died out due to meteorities or other attacks. There was a very busy case of one shark caught with an injury. She had apparently suffered not only some visible trauma, but also deep mental trauma. And after she recovered, she switched to pure veganism, that is, eating only plants.